yeah. you know, with, 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 with the IG client sentiment, what IG is doing for you is you got, you, you're looking at their, they are telling you where their retail traders are. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they are, they are telling you, and like, it's, it, it is like we just said, retail traders are usually off sides because they're not paying attention to the fundamentals. Yeah. So if all the, re what IG client sentiment is telling you is all the retail traders are going long. We say go short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. But, but also there's, there is a caveat to that. There is a caveat to that. Um, is that, you know, there, there are times where retail traders will be correct. Right. right. They will, they, they're, like, they're all going right. to be right at some point. A broken point. clock is right twice a day. Uh, absolutely. Right. A broken clock is right twice a day. 100%. So that, so, so when you're looking at sentiment, as an indicator, it's not always the best. Yes, generally retail traders, you know, are on the wrong side of the market, although they can be on the right side of the market. But you have to always anchor yourself in your trade idea. Yeah, always anchor yourself on the trade idea and what the um, uh, and not be driven by what's happening in the short term. Yeah, that is that is the absolute key. Absolute key is just don't um, just understand the the, the the mechanics behind it. And, and again, are we always right? No. Do we always get the timing right? No. But as long as you do this consistently, then you're going to see the results. But let me before obviously I didn't record the first half, so I'll kind of go over. Let me just go over. Um, I guess some of the stuff that I covered, unfortunately, guys, I know um, uh, who came in last. Uh, I think Habel have, have just come in and I know Igor just come in. Unfortunately, guys, and Mr. Diligent as well. You're right, Igor. Um, unfortunately, do you know what? We, we're having a really good session. <laughs> Fundamentals. And you know what? I forgot to press record. I really did. And, I'm, and I'm, I apologize. I'll try and go over some of the stuff or summarize some of the stuff um that we that we went over without going over too much um without back backtracking too much but the 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 point i was the the most recent point i was i guess we were talking about before you guys joined was to do with um the dollar right is understanding that the dollar is still number one right it's still number one or it's one of the best whether you want to call it number one or number two number three it's still in the the the, the currency that you should probably look to buy right and and canada is also another one now um we were just talking about for example the uh, the liquidity that generally happens so there was a lot of traders who and there are a lot of traders who have been if you go on social media um you, you know you, you're seeing that a lot of traders would have been looking at the the minus 0.2 percent gdp figure as being very negative and initially it, it 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 is right you're looking at that on the surface and it is but as we know is that the market is actually looking past that and in fact there was a um an article i think it was on the how far this is it how far can the fed go right and i think in here it did say it says with the federal reserve acknowledging it says the surprise the first quarter GDP contraction, right, let me just zoom in a bit, right, wasn't helpful going into May F FOMC meeting, right? The 1.4 annualized decline output was primarily due to drag from net trade uh, imports and inventory rundown. The underlying story on business, consumer spending was, wasn't nearly as bad, yet a negative GDP reading inevitably adds to a sense of nervousness about the economic outlook. It also creates doubts over how far... Uh, how fast um, the Fed will raise rates? I wasn't there. There was a there was a there was a an arc. There was something in here, I think, which basically said that the they were they were looking past, or was it this one? I've read so much today, I can't remember exactly where it was. Um, oh, where was it? Where was it? But basically. As I said, they're, they're, they're kind of looking past that number and, and, and looking at it like it's a bit of a temporary blip. Yeah. So with that being said, the the the, the, the dollar, in my opinion, was 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 still a buy. And I've, I, I maintain that that bias. Now, 
many traders would have looked at that number and that looked at that figure and said, well, you know what, the dollar's going to crash. Um, you know, uh, it's it's the beginning of the end, et cetera, et cetera. And as, as, as currency traders, we must always compare one with another, right? That's basically what we're doing. We're, we're comparing the dollar with, with the euro. Now, is the question you always have to ask is, is, is the euro in a better position than the dollar? And I would I would say, no, it's not. Right. Regardless of what the, uh, the the data is telling us at the moment, fundamentals generally are about present, but also future potential value. So with that being said, I think a lot of traders, even though there was, you know, negative data, I think, around the um, the the US, which traders generally wanted to believe. And with the Fed hiking, although it was, again, Hawk, uh, hawkish hike they hiked i think 50 basis points maybe not as much as you know some people maybe expected but they still you know were hiking rates what you saw was an exercise in uh, liquidity hunting and this was quite a big stop hunt so not to get into again the nitty-gritty of this but generally traders would have been getting stopped out to the upside and to the downside right they would have been stopped out here stopped out there and then eventually it draws in traders to go the opposite direction, because in order for the market to accumulate more dollars and make some money, they have to press sell on their broker, right? Especially against the euro dollar, right? So in order to sell, yeah, in order to, to, to accumulate sell orders, because remember, they're not trading how we trade. They have to scale in, in multiple positions, right? They're not just pressing one buy order and then that's them one and done. They have to scale in to, and scale out. So they need, their liquidity is what? Buy orders. They need lots and lots and lots of buy orders to facilitate their selling. Correct? Yeah. Everyone following, by the way? Everyone following so far? Yeah. So the liquidity is the buy orders in order for them to sell, which basically means on this pair, which is buying the dollar because they need to go short, right? So if they want to continue to buy the dollar, and remember, we've, and also as well for you, for, for, the, for the guys that missed the beginning, um, you know, the, 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 new, um, the new forecast, I guess, for the euro dollar is now parity, right, potentially. So the parity is no longer a shock. Also, to, to add to that, if you go to the dollar um, uh, channel, sorry, one second, where am I? United States, I posted something as well. So that was ING Bank. We're talking about dollar parity, right? But you also have um, Credit Suisse. I think it was, yeah, Credit Suisse. We're talking about, for us, the fact that the dollar has uh, risen to rarefied levels in March 2020 um, is not a foreseeable, um, is, not, is not in itself a reason to fade it. But they say, basically, I think he says down here somewhere, uh, it says, yeah, this is it. So the headline anyway is that, Euro dollar parity, Credit Suisse won't rule it out. So it's a possibility now. It's not like improbable. Or it's probably not, not likely to happen. You've got two banks and two analysts from, from two banks talking about it's possible for there to be, you know, um, uh, dollar parity. Yeah. So we could see, depending on how things get worse, if things de-escalate, or so I should say, they escalate in terms of you know the, uh, the Ukraine situation in 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 uh, Russia, right? Russia, Ukraine. We could actually see ourselves somewhere down here, right? And even from a fundamental pers perspective, you still want to be a buyer of the uh, of the dollar. So understanding that the the the, the medium to long term and not being so driven by short term price action, which most you know day traders and retail traders are. This was a great exercise in liquidity hunting, yeah. Um, because going back to liquidity, the, the it's, it's the hunt for buy orders, right? So anyone who would have went short in this candlestick here, right? Which there would have been a lot of traders at one point, yeah. Even though this is a thirty-minute candle, that would have looked very bearish, and would have got traders doing what? going short where are their stop losses above the market liquidity is above there remember this price here 105 is cheaper than down here 105 sorry 105 one uh 105 
1.052 is expensive. The higher you go is the more of a bargain it is to buy the dollar, right? So the, the, the retail don't, I mean, sorry, uh, the, the banks and institutions don't want to buy down here, right? Unless it's advantageous for them, which it looked like it was until they just created the narrative for everyone to go short and the price action took out the liquidity, which is basically the buy orders, right? So you need, you, you, these, are, these are the stop losses, which are the buy orders if they've gone short to sell. But what this also does is it draws in, yeah? It draws in more traders to go long. Now, how many traders out there do you think were going long on that massive bearish, sorry, that massive bullish candle when it, when it closed half an hour later? Majority. Probably, yeah, probably everyone, right? I would say, I say the majority because we, we think different, right? But retail traders, for sure, everybody would have been looking to try to do to go long, right? Not too many traders may have, you know, been able to have a wider stop because that stop would have been at least for your entry to, you know, you would have had to have had a hundred and maybe about a hundred and five pip, you know, stop loss. Not too many, right? But again, Mr. Diligent says break and retest of that resistance, right? So even if, even if you weren't a breakout trader, you're looking for somewhere to place your what? Your stop loss, right? And you need confirmation. So what do you need? So if this was resistance before, this should become what? Support. And it gives you actually a nice place to potentially place your stop loss if that price action does happen. And what did we see happen? It happens right there. Yeah. So it bounces off there and starts to go higher. The price action confirming that, and maybe if we go down to maybe even a 15-minute chart, it starts to look now, we get like a little pin bar there. Brilliant, yeah? So now, traders start to get involved and go long. They're doing what? More buying, right? Which is more liquidity, right? Again, always think about price. That's cheaper. That's cheaper. That's cheaper for the institutions. Cheap, 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 right? Exactly. More traders will enter their pin bar to go long. So there's more liquidity, right? Willing liquidity. These the, being stopped out is forced liquidity. The, the, uh, the, the trade setup is willing liquidity. Traders are willing to buy now because you've just had what's known as momentum to the upside, the momentum's to the upside, you know, the breakout traders, the retracement traders, brilliant. Want to go long, yeah? So there's more liquidity. And again, if retail are buying, remember I said before, the, the liquidity for, the, for people who want to sell, for the institutions who want to sell, they've got enough now. They have to scale in. Yeah. They have to scale. They can scale in now and buy and average in, et cetera. Right. And they can do all, they can take the position, the opposite of all this position. They've got enough liquidity now. Yeah. Because everyone's going long. And more people are going long. People are even FOMOing in, in at the high, right? There's breakout traders that are looking at that area and going even, even longer there, right? But now it starts to come back because the institutions have done all of their buying. Yeah, they've done all their buying on the, on the dollar. Yeah, they bought for up here, which is cheap, rather than buying down here, which is expensive. Right? Remember the, the backdrop of the of the of the um of uh, of of the dollar still going or oh, they're still hiking rates, right? So with that being said, what we know what happens, right? It even creates more buying. Look at this, right? You create more buying because that starts to become a structure right there. Yeah, let me just uh, delete some of this stuff. One second, let me delete some of this. So you've got more buying. At this little structure right here. Right there. Yeah. So more traders double bottom pattern. Brilliant. Go down to a five minute. It looks even better, right? Look at that. Starts to go higher. You've got whatever is known as a wedge pattern or some other pattern double bottom, and it starts to break to new highs, right? So there's even more traders going long. So pure liquidity. Remember, this has all happened over the space of hours. Sometimes this can happen over days, right? It can happen over maybe 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Nobody knows, right? Nobody knows the amount of liquidity 
that that the institutions are going to uh, are going to uh, take right to 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 induce um, you know the amount of liquidity that, that they need or they want to sell. Yeah. So this happened over from from seven what was it seven thirty seven forty all the way overnight. Right. Gets them all going long. Everyone's going probably gone to bed in Europe. Right. Brilliant. Excellent. They've got their trades open. This is going to the moon. This is going to the moon. This is where momentum. And then they start to get stopped out. And we know, for example, things like this start to happen, right? The stop hunt. A large, 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 large stop hunt. So all the liquidity, right? Massive stop hunt. The stop hunt was, if you're looking at it from the low to the high, about 50 pips, somewhere in that region. Yeah. And in fact, this, and I've bloody missed it now. <laughs> I've missed this trade. Well, actually, I wouldn't say I missed it because I wasn't planning to take it anyway, to be fair. And there's reasons why I wasn't planning to take it. But what's this? What's this, guys? What is that? What setup is that? Anyone tell me? What setup is this? CPR, Vitaly, well done. 